Hey guys, in this episode of PHP Front to Back, we're going to take a look at PHP cookies. In the last video, we looked at sessions. Now, the difference between sessions and cookies is that sessions, the data is stored on the server. With cookies, the data is actually stored in your browser on the client. So in almost all cases, I would suggest using sessions over cookies. They're much more secure. Um, with cookies you can you can set the expiration date even after the browser closes but when you start getting into that you probably want to look into persisting the data to a database um, but either way i figured it, it was a good idea just to show you how to do it uh, just so you know uh, so we're going to do this this is going to be pretty quick i'm going to create a new uh, folder in the php sandbox and we're going to call this website what are we at four five so website five and let's create a file and we'll save it as page one dot php and just like we did with the sessions i'm just going to put in a form here real quick all right so it's just a form with an a username field all right and then what i'm going to do is save the username to a cookie so let's go up here and we'll put in our php tags and let's check for the submit Okay, so we're going to say if uh, is set, wait a minute, where's my code highlighting? Why is this saved as an HTML or displaying as HTML? That's weird. Uh, there we go. So if is set and we want to check for a post and then submit because the submit button has a name of submit and right here what we'll do is Create a variable called username and we'll set that to HTML entities and let's pass in our post username. Okay, so now we have that in a variable. So what we do to set a cookie is we use the function set cookie. Okay, pretty simple. And the first parameter is going to be basically the name of the cookie. I'm going to call it username. Second is going to be the value which is going to be our username variable. And then the third is going to be the expiration. So I'm going to set it to uh, time using the, the current time function here. And then we're just going to add on to it 3600. And that's going to add it. That's going to set this cookie for one hour. OK, so after an hour, this is going to expire. And now what we're going to do is use the header function to redirect to a different page. So let's set location to page2.php. All right, so we submit the form, we put the username into a variable, and we call set cookie with username and then the value and then the expiration. So let's create a new file and save it as page2.php. All right, and on page two, what we're going to do is check to see if that cookie is set oh, we need our php tags okay so we're gonna just say if is set and then we'll pass in here using the cookie super global and we want to check for the username all right so if that's set then let's echo out um, let's see we'll just echo user and then let's just concatenate here cookie username and we'll go back into a string and we'll say is set and a line break and let's put an else and for that we'll just echo out uh, username or user is not set all right, so let's check that out. We're going to go to localhost slash PHP sandbox slash, uh, what is it, website 5 slash page 1 dot PHP. Unexpected set cookies. What? Uh, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I forgot my semicolon right here. All right, so let's add a name in here. We'll just say... Uh, yeah, we'll just say John, I guess. That's fine. Submit. And what the hell? 
What did I do here? I forgot the semicolon again. All right, so let's reload that, and we get user John is set. We should probably put a space there. All right, so now we have the cookie username set to John. Now, if we want to check this out in the console down here, if we click F12 and we go to application, and you can see I actually have some other stuff in here as well from doing the testing and all that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually just delete these, those two. And then this is the one that we just added. So it shows us the name of the cookie, the value, the domain, which is local host, the path, which is the path to um, the folder that it's in, and then the expiration, which is an hour from now, and the size. Okay, you can also view cookies if you go to, if you're in Chrome at least, you can go to settings. And there's a way to do this in all browsers. But if we go down to privacy and then content settings, and then... Uh, all cookies and site data and we're going to search for uh, local host okay so you can see this is all the stuff we have stored for local host and local storage and all that we want uh, this right here user that's actually not the one I want um, is this it no username that's what we want uh, and here it is username John domain path uh, when it was created and you can see it expires at 10 it was set at 940 it expires at 1040 and it's available to our script okay so that's how you can check out your cookies from the browser all right and uh, let's see what I want to do now is show you how to unset it okay uh, so we'll go we'll stay on page two and um, Actually, first I'll show you how to update it or how to change it. So to change it, we can just again call set cookie and make sure we use the same key or the same name, which is username. And we'll set that to Frank. And then we can set the expiration. Uh, this time I'm going to set it for a day. So we can use time and then plus. And then in here we'll do um, 86 400 and we want to multiply that by 30 and that will give that will set it for a day okay so let's save that and reload page two and then we get user Frank is set and if we look down in the console here you'll see username is now Frank now if we want to unset it what we can do is just set the time to something that's already passed all right so I'll actually just copy this and let's say here delete cookie paste that in and then let's just change uh, we're just gonna change this to let's say time and let's say minus 3600 which is the the amount of seconds in an hour so this is now set to an hour ago so we're going to set it and then we're going to unset it and see what happens. OK, so let's reload and then user is not set. OK, so it set it, unset it, and then uh, this fired off because it's not set. Um, you can also check to see if there are any cookies. So what I'm going to do is just delete or comment out the, the delete here so it gets set again. User Frank is set. And then right above this, let's do if and we'll say if count and then pass in cookie and we'll say if that is greater than zero that means there's cookies that are set okay so let's echo out uh, let's see we'll echo out uh, there are and then we'll concatenate the count cookie all right, so there are count cookies saved. And then else, else, then we'll just echo there are no cookies saved. All right, we'll save that and reload. And we get, oh, let's put a line break there. All right, so now we get there are one cookie saved. User Frank is set. 
Okay, and if we were to delete that by uncommenting this and reload twice, and now there are no cookies saved, user is not set. All right, so this is pretty simple stuff. Now, sometimes you may want to store more than one piece of data in a cookie, and a good way to do that is using an array, an associative array. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So let's create another page, save it as page 3.php. And in here, what we'll do is create an array. So let's create a variable called user, and we'll set that to some square brackets, and we'll have a name. Okay, we'll set that to Brad, and let's have an email, and we'll set that to, let's just say test at test.com, and let's say age, and we'll set that to 35. All right, so we have this array. Now, let's see what happens if we do set cookie, and we want to set this as the user, and then we'll pass in the user array and then let's say time oops what I keep doing that time uh, plus we'll say uh, eight six four hundred times 30 so that'll be one day all right now let's see what happens if we do that so let's go to page three and we get set cookie expects parameter two to be a string but there's an array given, okay? So it's not gonna take our array, it's looking for a string. Now what we can do is we can use the uh, function called serialize, which will prepare the data to be stored. So let's say user equals, and then use the serialize function and pass in the user array. Okay, so now we'll save that and reload. And we don't get anything because we're not outputting anything, but you can see there's no error. And if we look down here in cookies, you'll see user and then the value, which looks really weird, but that's what it, what happens when you serialize it. So what we want to do now is we want to grab, uh, let's say we want to get the name from that. So what we'd have to do is unserialize it. So let's say user equals um, actually, first, let's see what happens if we don't unserialize. So if I say echo uh, user, actually, that's not going to work. Let's say echo cookie. Actually, we'll put that in user. User equals cookie user. All right, and then we'll try to echo out user which you would think would be the array and then name so if we do that we get illegal offset name it's because it's this isn't an actual readable array so what we need to do is unserialize it all right and then we'll save and reload and we get brad okay we can get brad we can get uh, the email all right we could do um, a print R of this. And take a look at that. And you'll see we have all of our values. All right, so that's how you can serialize data, save it into a cookie, and then unserialize it. Uh, but again, I would suggest in probably 95% of the time, I'd recommend uh, sessions over cookies, unless there's some specific reason that you need to use cookies. Alright, so thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video.